Hi, welcome to part two of unit three. Scientific notation um, is something that's very important to know how to convert between just because a lot of times you'll end up with a number in your calculator and you don't know what it means. For instance, if I type this number in, 9 to the 15th, 9 raised to the 15th, and I hit enter, I get this weird looking number here. This number is in a special format called scientific notation. And it has that name because scientists use it to write really big numbers in something that's a little bit easier to read. So um, what it does is it says, I'm going to take a number between 1 and 10, and I'm going to multiply it by some multiple of 10. So I'm going to multiply it by 10, or 100, or 1,000, or 10,000. And so I take 5, and 10 to the 4th means that 10 with, with a 1 with 4 zeros, which is 10,000. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 10,000, and that gives me 50,000. So as you can see, scientific notation is a way to take something like 50,000 and write it as 5 times 10 to the fourth power because 5 times 10,000 is 50,000. That's scientific notation. I have an x for multiplying and then I have 10 raised to some power. And the power is really important because that tells us how many places to move the decimal. So I start out with 5. There's no decimal point here, so if I put a decimal point right after the 5, and then if I have a number 4 here, it says move the decimal point to the right 4 places. So I come over here, and I take my 5, and I put my decimal point, and then I move it 4 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put 4 zeros in there. 1, 2, 3, 4. And so 5 times 10 to the 4th is the same as 50,000. So that's when I have a positive number on the 10. If I have a negative number on the 10, it says take 10 and write it as a fraction. 10 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 tenth, which can be written as a decimal, 0.1. 10 to the negative 2 is 0 0.01. So here, instead of moving the decimal point to the right, we move the decimal point to the left. Negative means move the decimal point to the left. Positive means move the decimal point to the right. So if I have 5 times 10 to the negative 4, I'm going to start with my 5, and my decimal point's in the same spot, and this time I move it 4 places to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put zeros in to fill those little loops, and so I end up with point. 0, 0, 0, 0005. Only three zeros. The decimal point moves the number that's on there. So that's the really important part about scientific notation. Let's practice. Let's convert from scientific notation to standard notation. So if I want to convert the first one, I'll write it up here. I write down 2.34 and I want to turn it into standard notation. So I look at that exponent on the 10, and it's a positive 5. So I'm going to move my decimal point 5 places to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I have to put zeros anywhere I have an empty loop. I have three empty loops, so it gets three zeros. So 2.34 times 10 to the fifth is the same as 234,000. The next one, 2.34 times 10 to the negative 3, I'm going to take my decimal point and I'm going to move it 3 places the other direction since it's negative 3. So I go 3 places to the left, 1, 2, 3. So that gives me 2 empty loops, so I have to put 2 zeros in there. So 2.34 times 10 to the negative 3 is the same as point zero zero two three. So that's converting from scientific notation to what we call standard notation, or just the regular the way we read it. And that's what you're going to do the most um, if whenever you use it, because that's what you have on your calculator when you have really big or really small numbers. So this big number on here on the calculator says this is 2 with 14, moving the decimal point 14 places to the left. 
So this number is longer than the calculator screen, which is why we have scientific notation. Converting the other way, I put a decimal point at the very end of my number, and then I count the loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until I have a number between one and 10. So 7.42 is a number between one and 10. 7.42 times 10 to the, now this is a really big number, so that means my, my exponent is gonna be a positive number. And I said this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's 7.42 times 10 to the seventh. The next one already has a decimal point. It's a very small number that I'm gonna make bigger by moving the decimal. One, two, three, four, five, six. I want a number between one and 10. So this is 1.23 times 10. Now this time it's a negative exponent because I took a really small number and I turned it into a number between 1 and 10. So it's a negative 6. Now it's very important to not confuse uh, scientific notation with rounding. If I ask you to round the number 714.25 to one decimal place, that means I want you to draw your line between the 2 and the 5 and figure out whether I round up or down. So five is between five and nine, so I round up. So if I round to one decimal place, that's 714.3. If I convert to scientific notation, I move the decimal place two places, that's 7.1425 times 10 to the second. Okay, scientific notation, you move the decimal point, rounding, you cut off and keep that decimal point. Last we have solving word problems that use, well the first one uses proportions. And so a proportion is when you have a fraction equal to a fraction. Here is a good example of a proportion problem. You don't have to solve them this way, but it's pretty quick to set up. So I have a stack of 18 pieces of lumber, 18 pieces, and, they are, and the whole stack is 31 and a half inches thick. I want to know how thick a stack of 33 sheets would be. So I'm given three pieces of information, and I want a fourth. And I have 18 pieces and 33 pieces, 31 and a half inches, and how many inches? So I have pieces to thickness and pieces to thickness. So I set up this fraction problem. So I have 18 over 31.5, and that equals 33 sheets over a thickness I don't know, x. I'm going to solve this problem by what is called cross multiplying. So I take the top fraction number and I multiply it across the equal sign by the bottom. So I get 18x and that I keep my equal sign equals and then I multiply again the top number and the bottom number. So I get 33 times 31.5. So I want to get x all by itself. It's 18 times x so I'm going to divide both sides by x. So I divide 33 times 31.5 divided by 18. And that's what I'm going to type into my calculator. So I do my fraction bar. 33 times 31.5. All of that is divided by 18. And that'll tell me how thick. Now, again, I want it as a decimal. So I change it 57.75. All word problems, make sure you write the units. And if I tell you specifically, write them as I-N, that means I want you to write it exactly like that, I-N, or you might not get credit for that. I'll go back in and fix it if you do it right, but write it in the wrong format. But you should always answer the question in the exact format they tell you. All right, last example. This, uh, you had one of these um, problems in the f fraction section. Um, no, not in the fractions, in unit one, and I put this PowerPoint up with an example, but I didn't run through it with a video. So I'm gonna run through it now. 
A welder earns $12.50 an hour plus time and a half. So if, if he works 53.75 hours in one week, I want to know how much he gets paid. So this is a multi-part problem. I know he gets $12.50 for 40 hours, but then I have to figure out how much he makes for the rest of the time. So the first thing I want to do is calculate time and a half. So time and a half is when you take the wage, 1250, and you divide it by 2, which is 6.25, and then you add that to the wage. So time and a half is $18.75. That's a pretty good deal. So that's how every hour he works over 40 hours, he makes $18.75. So I have to figure out how many hours that is. So I subtract. 53.75 minus 40, so he works 13.75 hours more than 40 hours. So now I do two multiplication problems. I take how much he gets paid per hour for the regular rate, $12.50 times 40, that's my first multiplication problem, that equals 500. And then I take the second one, which is how much he makes in overtime, 1875, and I multiply that by how many hours he worked in overtime, 13 hours, and 13.75 hours, and that is, I have to round it, so uh, I'm going to just keep that number there for now, 257.8125. So I add that to the 500. If you just hit plus, see how it says ants? It'll, that say it says take my answer and add to it. So I add and I get $757.81. Make sure you round to the nearest penny. It doesn't, you, you don't get paid in quarter pennies. So uh, your, your employer gets to keep that quarter of a penny for themselves. Uh, and make sure when you do this that you also again include your units of dollars. So that's it. Those are all of my examples. Good luck with Unit 3. And again, if you have any questions, please, please contact me. I would love to help you. Okay. Take care, and I hope you do well in this section.